All right, so I got this three pack of organic chicken thighs from Costco. The price is crazy now, but that's it is what it is. So what I'm going to do is, I know this is already vacuum sealed, but I like to have marinated meat ready to go in my freezer. It makes meals really easy. So I'm going to take these two packages and put them in my vacuum seal bags and vacuum seal them with some marinade on them. And sorry if you don't like looking at raw meat. Um, this is this is a pack of chicken thighs that um, I'm going to put this tamarind sweet and tangy sauce. It is past its expiration, but it seems fine. And we are going to use it. And then um, that will probably be two of the chickens. And then the other one will be with this Italian dressing that we want to use up. And two of them will go in the freezer for later. And one will be for our dinner this week. For Saturday, July 1st, dinner is going to be um, these burgers with this grass-fed ground beef that I got on clearance a few days ago. It was in the freezer and I pulled it out to thaw. We can top it with some cheese. I have some of this grilling and roasting seasoning to season it with. And then we're just going to chop up some veggies. I still have some of this mozzarella cheese. Um, I have another red pepper to cut up, some tomatoes, cucumber, the green onion. Um, we still have some croutons, just a few croutons, and I pulled out, still trying to use things up, I have some of these salad toppers um, that need to be used up so those can go on our salad too. So we're going to do Trader Rose tater tots, the burgers with no bun, and salad. And we still have some different kinds of dressing. I have this French vinaigrette, which is really good, and my husband likes this country and I'll show you when our plates are together. All right, here's Friday night dinner. The burgers, the tater tots, and salad. And then we have ketchup, mayo, A1 sauce, whatever we want for toppings, um, our condiments, and that's dinner. It is Sunday, June 2nd, and I am going to a cookout. Um, well, it'll probably be an inside event because it is pouring out today, but, I am bringing a black bean feta dip that is super easy to put together. You serve it with tortilla chips and everyone seems to love it. Um, so I'm going to show you quickly what goes into it. So it's just a can of drained rinse black beans, um, a can of this white shoe peg corn that's just strained. This is a feta. I have two five ounce packages that I got um, on clearance and I will just eyeball that um, and then for the dressing it's garlic powder salt and pepper to taste a little bit of sugar apple cider vinegar and this extra light olive oil and that's everything and oh and a bunch of scallions I have all these scallions that I got on clearance that I will clean up the equivalent of one bunch and use in there here is the mixture of the black beans corn, feta, and green onion before I put the dressing on. And the dressing is really easy. It's just a quarter cup of the extra light olive oil, quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, and a quarter cup of sugar, and salt, pepper, and garlic powder to taste. All right, so I'm making some banana bread to use up some of the large collection of bananas we have in the freezer. And also, I have a lot of frozen butter that I purchased a long time ago that I am trying to get through. Um, so the plan is just to make some banana bread. So I creamed together the butter and the brown sugar. I'm going to add the bananas, eggs, flour, baking powder, oh, baking soda, cinnamon, a little bit of nutmeg and vanilla, and bake up some banana bread for breakfast or snacks this week. It should be delicious. Monday, July 2nd, dinner is stir fried vegetables. This is a bag of frozen stir fried veggies some frozen peppers and some frozen um, sliced up walking onions that I had in the freezer. And I'm just going to add salt, pepper, a little bit of coconut aminos, and that's our veggie side. And then our protein um, is the chicken thighs that I marinated with the Asian tamarind sauce um, a couple days ago, and it's going in the air fryer. Here is Monday night dinner the chicken thighs and the stir fry vegetables. Quick and easy. To show you, it's actually cooler outside than it is inside right now. 
Um, so we're opting to eat outside on our deck. So I'm going to a family party and I'm making potato salad so the first thing I'm doing is chopping up the potatoes and I'm going to cook them and then I'll show you what's going on inside the potato salad. So I have my blackberries that I picked this morning soaking so I can get make sure there are no bugs in them, make sure they're nice and clean before I freeze them. I chopped up some fresh chives from the garden, dill from the garden, celery from the fridge. I have this onion to go into the potato salad and then also I'm going to chop up some dill pickles and put those in. And then it'll be mayo, salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic powder, and a little bit of mustard. And that will be the potato salad. For July 5th dinner, I am popping this pork roast into the crock pot. And I'm going to make pulled pork. It was originally $11.41. It was on sale for $7.98, and then because it needs to be cooked or frozen today, it was 50% off of that. Sorry, $9.78. So I paid under $5 for this 3.27 pound roast, and I'm just going to put it in the crock pot with some garlic, salt, and pepper for a while. And then before we eat it, I will add... I have this barbecue sauce that was also on clearance that I need to use up, and then I also have some of this barbecue sauce from Costco. Um, that we've had around for a while, so we will add barbecue sauce and then we'll find sides to go with it. This pulled pork is so good. I tasted it. I didn't even add the barbecue sauce in the crock pot. I pulled all of the pulled pork out, shredded it up, and then added the barbecue sauce, and it is so good. I think um, my husband's going to do some kind of wrap with it, and I'm just going to eat this and some potato salad and maybe some leftover corn on the cob, and that will be it. Alright, so I am making a tomato basil salad with some thin sliced Vidalia onions and a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, and balsamic vinegar. I needed to prune my basil in the garden so that it would produce more. Um, also, some of this is a little holy. Something has been eating it. But it is all clean and bug free and we are going to make a tomato basil salad to go with our dinner. Sorry, I'm still chewing on it. This is so good. So it's just tomatoes. I wish they were from the garden, but they're not. Some Vidalia onions. Um, I have lettuce leaf basil, so the leaves are very big. I had to chop them up or tear them up. Um, so basil, tomatoes, very thinly sliced Vidalia onions, salt, pepper, and a little bit of light olive oil and balsamic vinegar, and it is so good. And you can make this a little bit ahead of time. It's better if it sits a few minutes. Oh, and salt and pepper. I don't know if I said that. So well, this was a dollar and nineteen cents worth of reduced mushrooms. I washed them up. You might choose not to wash up mushrooms or to wipe them or use a brush, but in this house we just wash mushrooms. They don't sit long enough to really absorb water, and if they do, it really doesn't make a difference. We find. Um, so I'm going to slice these up and cook them up with the rest of the onion I have left from making the tomato basil salad. And that'll be a side. I also have shishito peppers from the garden, our first harvest. Um, there aren't very many, but I will make a small bit of aioli to go with it. And we have salmon that I got using coupons. And I paid five cents for over a pound of salmon. So um, we will be eating that fresh before it goes bad. I just bought it yesterday. All these shishitos came out of a, off of one plant in my greenhouse. Um, it's our first harvest. You kind of have to stay on top of it or the plants slow down in their production. But this should definitely be enough for us to have as a little appetizer for just the two of us. And the aioli that I make is really just mayonnaise, lemon juice, salt, pepper, garlic powder. That's it. I have the salmon with salt, pepper, dill. Oh, I sprayed it with a little bit of avocado oil first. And then I put lemons on top. That will go in the air fryer until it is tender and flaky. My onions starting to saute. I'll add my mushrooms. Uh, this is like a very tiny cast iron. We just got it for um, camping actually, but we've been using it in our house and it's been very nice. Um, I put a teeny tiny bit of oil to blister the shishitos in this pan. I'm going to get it 
pot and throw those in. Here are the mushrooms, all chopped up and ready to go. The tomato basil salad and the aioli are in the fridge right now. Um, and we'll pull those out when we're ready for dinner. String up the shishitos, and my husband and I were just talking about, um, let's see like 1 in 10 or 1 in 12 shishitos is spicy. But we went to a restaurant and ev almost every single shishito was spicy. Except for the ones that he was eating. Everyone else was getting the spicy ones. So we'll see. We'll see um, if these are all spicy or um, if that 1 in 10 rule applies. Last year's were mostly all mild. Once in a while you would get a hot one. Is dinner the salmon? The mushrooms, the aioli, and the shishitos, lemon for the salmon, and the tomato basil salad. Alright, thanks for watching what we ate this week. I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and I will see you in the next video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope to see you soon.